Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Secretary, uh, would you agree that sanctions are one of the few peaceful tools of diplomacy? Senator, I do agree that sanctions are an effective tool of diplomacy um, yeah. that are peaceful. And I appreciate that the Treasury Department is thinking through how to ensure the sanctions remain an effective tool, but I'm concerned that this review doesn't reflect a holistic approach to sanctions. I mean, I, I see the, the Treasury Department as basically as the entity that once an administration decides to pursue sanctions in pursuit of peaceful diplomacy somewhere in the world is the executor of those sanctions. Uh, I think most people would agree that sanctions are a foreign policy tool, but this review is basically a Treasury-centric product that does not address the many sanctions authorities implemented by the State Department and largely pays lip service to the State Department's role in sanctions. At the same time, I get the sense that the State Department often struggles to play an effective role. They don't match up well to Treasury's resources and capacity in this area. So my question to start off is, why spend all of this time and effort on a review when it is a single agency product rather than one is, uh, that is reflected of the overall foreign policy component that should be dri the driving force, I think, in our sanctions policies? Senator, I completely agree that um, sanctions are a tool that are driven by foreign policy decisions that are made um, and mainly driven by um, the State Department and the National Security Council. But given the importance of this tool and the use of the tool, we wanted to make sure that we're ensuring that the tool is effective going forward. And we worked closely with the State Department with regard to this report, and we look forward to working closely with them. On well, the let me ask you this. If, if, I don't know how closely you worked, but would you consider a joint effort with State moving forward? We do plan to uh, a joint effort with state going forward. Oh, let me ask you, uh, you know, sanctions are only as good as they are enforced, like any other law. If you have a law, uh, you know, if, uh, there's a red light and you go through the red light, unless there's the likelihood you, there'll be an enforcement against you for doing so, you'll go through the red light. Same thing in the terms of sanctions in a more significant context. Um, I've raised this before, but I'm deeply concerned that China is continuing to buy from uh, oil in significant, significant quantities from Iranians, both subverting international sanctions and impacting the oil market. I'm disappointed that the United States, and for that fact, the rest of the international community doesn't seem to be holding China accountable for these violations. What steps are you taking to enforce uh, sanctions on China to comply uh, with the law? Senator, uh, at the Treasury Department, we're committed to complying with the law and to seeking intelligence on the companies and entities that are purchasing illegal um, oil and to holding them accountable. Uh, we're happy to provide you and your staff with a classified briefing on the steps we're taking with regard to those entities. Well, I appreciate that you're committed to it, but only sanctioning actually makes uh, it relevant at the end of the day. And we're not. This is being done in plain view. I mean, we're talking about you know, millions and millions of barrels of oil that are being purchased by China from Iran in clear view of everyone in the international community. I don't know how much, how much due diligence is ultimately necessary to find out that which is available to the public eye. So uh, I, I really look forward to hearing what you're going to do in that regard. I also look forward to understanding, for example, you know, Turkey and the S-400. Uh, they're talking about making more purchases. Uh, when we wrote this law, we wrote it in such a way so that certain actions are mandatory in nature, not discretionary. But yet we have seen both the past administration uh, and this administration not necessarily enforcing the mandatory nature of the sanctions. Why not? Senator, I'm committed to enforcing mandatory sanctions where we have the proof and evidence to do so. Uh, we rely heavily on the Council of Career Lawyers at the Treasury Department, the DOJ, in terms of how that, enfor that enforcement and also on the intelligence that we have at hand. Well, I love lawyers, but they can kill uh, every process in the, in the world. Uh, the reality is, is that I find that Congress's intent is habitually subverted by both the previous administration and so far, in some cases, this administration. Last question, 
When can we expect to see designations related to the executive order on imposing sanctions on certain persons with respect to the humanitarian and human rights crisis in Ethiopia that was issued by the administration on September 17th? Senator, we're committed to finding a peaceful resolution to the situation in Ethiopia. And we have, the president has issued an executive order and we continue to work with parties to bring them to the table, but have made very clear that we are also willing to use that executive order to do so. Um, as the process continues, we will continue to evaluate sanctions targets and are committed to keeping you informed as we do so. Okay, I, I appreciate you're very committed, uh, but I have to be honest, I don't see the commitment in action and so I'm looking forward to the action uh, on these and others. I have other questions I'll submit it for the record. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Senator Manning.